Hey, welcome back to my bench. Today I got a treat. This is a Harman Kardon 330B, and uh, I bought it on eBay. It's got a problem. I bought it at, uh, for parts repair. Um, it's a nice unit, actually. It's not bad cosmetically. It's not too badly dinged up. It is dirty. It needs cleaning, but um, other than that, it seems to be okay. But uh, it has a definite problem inside, and I'll show you what it is. But first, I'll just turn it on. These are the lights are working. Um, I got it on AM right now, tuning in stations. The meter's going, so it's the tuners are definitely working. FM. I don't have an antenna, but if I scan the band. Yeah, there's some activity there around 106. Um, hook up speakers, you don't get any sound. I'll show you why in a second. Speakers, two sets of speakers, stereo mono switch, tape monitor, and um, loudness contour. It's a very basic unit. It's um, this is collectible. It is a collectible uh, Harman Kardon piece. That's why I picked it up because it is. Uh, it does deserve to be um, fixed. And brought back and uh, used again. So, but I'll show you exactly why it won't work. I'll, let me remove the camera around. So let's have a look on the inside. Oh, check this out. For whatever reason, somebody removed the power amplifier. Now. Uh, I'm not understanding why they would do that. If it was something they couldn't fix, they could have just snipped wires and left it in place. But um, it's gone. It didn't come with a power amplifier. So I have a plan for this. Um, I'm going to put a power amplifier in here. And I'm going to resurrect this thing back to its uh, former, former um, you know, use. Um, I can't understand why somebody would remove it altogether unless they salvage this uh, amplifier from this unit to run another one but uh, for me I can't see it. it would just be just easier just to uh, repair the amplifier instead of swapping them out but uh, we're gonna have to do something about this and I got a good idea so uh, just bear with me here okay so here's the underside of the chassis uh, speaker fuses that one's intact. And that one's intact. So I'm assuming the amplifier is okay. The um, this has the preamp out and main amp in connections and it's missing the jumpers. But uh, here is the signal wires. I got a white and a black one. Those are my um, input for the power amplifier. I got some wires here that were heat shrinked to cover up. I think these are speaker connections. And I got a black wire here. It's just probably a ground. Uh, I don't see a power wire, but it looks like somebody systematically clipped this out and covered these up so they wouldn't short and um, turned this into just maybe a preamplifier tuner. Um, and use it on a on a with a separate power amplifier, but that still doesn't make sense because why would they just leave it in place and uh, unplug the uh, jumpers and use it that way? But uh, anyway, it's going to remain a mystery to me anyway. Um, so it, all, it looks like a nice unit, nice and clean and well taken care of. Doesn't look like it's been worked on otherwise. So uh, it's good. We're going to get it back and going and I'm going to show you here what my plan is. All right, so this arrived today and I've been itching to get into it. Let's see if I can open this up and show you without spilling all my security details. So, and this, this by the way, um, came international overnight from China in one day and I was really impressed. 
so there it is. It's actually the second time I used them. Um, the first time I used them, I ordered printed circuit boards and I can't remember the date, back in May, I think. And I'm still waiting for them because I was a cheapskate. I ordered the free, free shipping option. This time around, I uh, opted to pay $24 for the DHL and it was here the next day, which is awesome. So, what do we have in the box? Got a cool sticker. Yeah, very nice. These are for another project altogether. These are for another project altogether. This is for this project. Uh, what I did is I made printed circuit boards and uh, from scratch, I went in and did the AutoCAD thing and uh, got them made up and uh, so here's our replacement board we just have to populate it populate this and we're going to uh, put it in the re amplifier receiver let's pull one out and have a look at it pretty good. I'm impressed with their quality of their uh, construction and this is a learning thing for me so I might not have the whole diameter sizes right and I might not have um, you know using the right the right footprint for capacitors for example but um, you know going off the service manual going off schematics and drawings of the uh, the board itself and uh, the, the, the trace layouts and the component placements I, uh, I created this so let's uh, try this into the uh, receiver and see how it fits it should fit unless they screwed up my measurements Got my little copyright on there too. Cool. All right, so we're back here. Let's see. Looks like it's gonna be perfect fit for the holes and the board. Everything should be 100%. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Yeah. Now the only thing I didn't. Uh, put any thought into was heat sinking and uh, I got CPU fans or heat sinks I was thinking taking one of these cutting it in half and then I can have one for each channel and I can mount them on and I think that'll be good there's a lot of cooling capacity in this thing even convection convention convectionally if I orientate the fins like that, the hot air will rise. And uh, it looks like it will fit. No, it won't. It won't fit under. I might have to cut these off. But we'll figure something out. Because I have uh, lots of scrap aluminum here and I got bins full of old heat sinks and stuff. And I'll, maybe I'll find a, I wouldn't mind a one piece solution. But if I have to go two pieces, I don't care. I'll do it. I'll just make little brackets and just a few extra screws and everything will be honky-dory. Okay, so I'll get started. I think I have to start collecting up some parts. I already have, for this project, a bunch of parts already coming in. I don't know if this is a repair or a project. I guess it's a project. So... So I got film capacitors. These are 10 ohm resistors I needed. Uh, that's for something else. That's for something else. Um, these are the would be the emitter resistors, 0.47. 
There'll be the emitter resistors, more film capacitors. Empty, empty. Okay, these are the transistors I selected. Because uh, the original 2SC1107s aren't going to be easy to find. So what I did is I ordered a bunch of these. These are uh, BD243s and uh, equivalent to the 2SC1107s. So this should work good. NPN transistors. So we'll get started on this. And uh, we've got caps, resistors, everything we need. Except for heat sinking. Okay, I'll get started on this. Hey, all right, we're back. And I've got a little bit of work done here. I have the board populated. And uh, it's just a matter of securing it down, finding heat sink, and getting those four transistors soldered in. I haven't done that yet. Everything else is complete on this. I still have to get the double um, double junction diodes for the, uh, the heat uh, compensation on the circuit on this thing. So, but that's easy. I can just get double di uh, regular diodes and put them, put them, stack them up. But yeah, it turned out really nice. Um, the board is perfect in the way that I ordered it. Uh, there's no mistakes. I have nothing bad to say about the board whatsoever. Uh, my mistakes are is I have I overlooked hole sizes. A lot of these holes were 0.6 millimeters and um, if you actually measure the leads on some of these resistors they are at 0.6 millimeters or over so I had a hell of a time getting uh, a lot of these resistors in the holes I had to drill out a few of them so uh, newbie mistake make sure you have the right hole sizes for your your components other than that it was, it was smooth as glass everything worked great so what I'll do is I'll secure this down. Um, see, I'm still thinking about using this cutting in half and using it as two pieces, uh, but it won't work. I don't have enough room here. I don't have enough clearance to uh, get that to work unless I cut off some major things here. I'm going to look around and see what I got for heat sinks. Um, i got copper ones here. Even these are way too big. So it's no good. I do have... I do have copper heat sinks like this. Uh, I would need to cut it. Yeah, this would work. Let's see. It would work. I'd have to secure it down somehow. And it might be a little bit too wide. Hmm. I would need to cut a boat. Two and a half, four. I would need to cut a chunk at least two and a half inches tall so it would fit in there. And then, other than that, it's just a matter of drilling and tapping for the transistors and getting the mounts. I'd have to mount it from the bottom. The original holes are here. The other thing is it's very heavy. It's a very heavy heat sink. It must weigh about five pounds. And uh, putting a lump like that in the back here might cause problems if it's not secured properly. 
I'll see if I can find something in aluminum before I start cutting up my copper heat sinks. All right, so this is what I come up with. A chunk of aluminum extrusion heat sink. I had to chop it. Uh, it was four inches and I cut it down to two and a half. It's just over four inches wide. It was for two uh, TO3 cases, but uh, I think this will work. If I can get it to mount in there somehow, put some brackets to mount it to the bottom chassis. And, uh, and then I can start locating, drilling and tapping the, uh, the holes for the transistors. And the okay, so I got the heat sink cut down the size that I want. And uh, that's essentially where it's going to go, right there. Well, right there actually. But I put a couple of brackets on the side and I'm going to use these existing holes for uh, securing it down. I don't know if two, hole, two screws is enough though. What I'm thinking of doing is maybe moving it close like that to the transistors and then the transistor can... Um, it's, So it can be up like this, probably. Up like that. I'm just worried about movement this way. Like that. What I might do is I might make an L bracket and just pin it to the back so it doesn't vibrate or rock. And then that way we won't end up with busted uh, leads on our transistors, cracked solder joints. Okay, so I'll mark these holes where I want to drill them. Okay, I got the heat sink mounted, located and mounted where I want it. And I got it in just the right spot, I think, to uh, so these transistors can just go in like that. And that's what I plan on doing. I'm going to mark holes for Drilling the transistors, I'll mark four holes for that and drill those out, tap them for a machine thread. And then I'll uh, drill a couple holes for the mounting of the two temperature sensor diodes that I'll need. Uh, and then uh, it's just a matter of soldering these in and then um, wiring up the amplifier. And then we're gonna hear some sound, I hope. All right, so I've been busy doing a little bit of work. I got the four transistors, I got the holes drilled and tapped, and then I got the transistors mounted, they're soldered to the board. I have the, um, the double diode uh, junction temperature sensors mounted, uh, a little bit of heat sink goop on there to make sure that they get the right heat sink temperature. So everything's done on top here. Uh, I just need to flip it over and start connecting wires from the uh, chassis to the board. Um, one thing I want to do before I do anything else is I want to power this on, this amplifier, with a bench supply. Uh, just to make sure I don't have any uh, upsets, any uh, ex unexpected surprises, you know what I mean? So uh, maybe I'll do that. What I'll do is I'll attach the speakers to the board, speaker connections to the board, and then I can uh, attach my bench speakers and then I'll apply um, I don't know what the supply voltage is for this thing. It never really says. 52.3, 52.5 volts. Yeah, that's the full, full output from this power transformer in this bridge. They only got a 2200 microfarad capacitor here. I might upgrade that if it's, I'll test, test it, see if it's bad or not. It's an old one. But uh, I might slap a 4700 or maybe something bigger, I don't know. And they only have one too, that's unusual. So anyways, power supply, the full power is 53.5 volts. And that connects to through the fuses to the two, two amplifiers. Um, okay, it's got marked in the board here, LP407. LP412. Okay, so those two LP4 
somewhere back here. I should have markings for the... Uh... Okay, so I'll do that. Connect the speakers and then I'll bench, uh, I'll bench in some power to uh, see if it's going to smoke or not. Okay, so I got the uh, inputs wired. I have the ground attached. I have the speaker outputs connected. I don't have the power rails connected yet. I still have two wires dangling here. They come from these two fuses and they supply power for the left and right channel. But I do have it hooked up to a power supply and I have it at 12 and a half volts. So I'm going to attach the positive to see what happens. Getting very quiet thump out of the speakers and no current being drawn. That's a good sign. The other channel, same thing, got zero milliamps. So let's turn up the vo voltage. Let's turn it up to 30 volts. Let's see how this goes. Still got nothing there. Still quiet there. I think I'm going to put full power to it. And then, uh, let's actually, before I do that, let's get a signal going. All right, so I got the power supply tied in to the board. And uh, it's a matter of just applying full power now. Make sure that's off, speakers are on. Okay, let me put this in. Let's turn down the amplitude of this signal. So I don't know what's going to come blasting out of here. If it's going to be bad or good. Okay, turning it on. Okay, so things aren't going as, ex as expected here because uh, obviously it's not working. Um, I've got a few problems on my hands i got to deal with. Uh, when I turn on the power, the amplifier is working. I can barely hear anything out of the speakers. But there is something. The problem is I have a lot of bias current. I'm supposed to have 8 millivolts across these emitter resistors and i got like point uh, or sorry 63 millivolts so it's like eight times what it should be and the heat sink is getting warm with uh, just sitting on idling this side has 30 millivolts this side has 65 I think and uh, turning the adjustment pots doesn't seem to affect it I think the problem is in the bias circuit Let's see if this one does anything. See, this one does nothing as well. And at 33 millivolts, turn to crank it completely the other way. I'm still at 33 millivolts. So, I think the problem might lie in one of my substitutions. Um, not having the original parts, I substituted transistors. Um, in order to try and get this working, but uh, seems like I might have the wrong substitution in one of these spots, especially in the bias circuit. Um, continues to get warm. That kind of concerns me. You know, it, it is pulling a lot of current through those transistors which is expected. Um, 
two things I want to check, three things I want to check. The double the double junction diodes that I'm using and make sure they're correct. And the trim pots for the bias adjustment, I want to make sure they're working. And uh, I want to check around some of these substituted transistors I put in, make sure that I'm getting uh, proper voltages. Somehow I don't think I am. Nothing's getting hot. Aside from the main power transistors are heating up this heat sink. It's up around 50 degrees C now, so I'm going to shut it off, let it cool down. Unfortunately, it's not playing nice. Okay, I'll give you a peek at what's going on underneath here. Um, I got the new board mounted and wired in. The inputs, right and, le right and left, the right is red and it comes from the uh, main input jack for the, for the amplifier. These are the preamp outputs. So I'm feeding a signal directly into the amplifier and this is the left and um, that's pretty much it for there. There's a ground wire, one ground wire. And um, the green and the purple, those are my outputs to the speakers. This is a, ca a capacitor coupled uh, audio amplifier. So there's a thousand microfarad capacitor in series with the output transistors and the speakers. So uh, you, can, you, do, you won't ever get any DC current going through these because it's got a, that thousand microfarad blocking capacitor. Unless the capacitor fails, of course, and then you got a problem. Um, power is fed to the amplifier by these two wires here, and they come from these fuses. So I got the, oh no, sorry, not these two wires, this orange wire and this red wire. This wire's for left channel, I believe, and then the other red wire, or orange wire, yeah, orange wire here, this orange wire feeds the power for the other amplifier. So there's two independent amplifiers on this board and they're both fed separately with, with power and they're fused. That's where they have the, uh, the fuses. So if you have a problem with your amplifier, um, these fuses are going to go. There's only one and a half amps here. And um, these amplifiers are fed with, um, believe it or not, it's like 55 volts. Let's measure it right now. You can't see that, can you? And let me get this set here. And then this, I'll put on one of the... There, and I'll turn it on. Yeah, 47 volts. It's about 50 volts when you uh, have no load. So I got both channels working. Um, I removed my contraption of these diodes doesn't work. Found some proper uh, bias diodes. And these I had to dig through my, oh sorry. So these diodes I had to dig through my parts bin and I found some, these are salvaged probably from another amplifier and I'm just reusing them. Um, I still have to go through and do all the, the settings, the bias settings. And the um, there's two trim pots for each channel. So I'll go through and do that, and then we'll do some performance testing to see how this is working. But so far, I turn it on. I'm feeding at 100 millivolts right now. Let's turn this down. That's five millivolts I'm feeding into the signal. And uh, let's see if we get different frequency here. Here's 10 hertz. Let's turn it up. It's working. But I shouldn't be playing around with this. I should actually set up the amplifier before I start uh, putting loads on it. So what I'll do is I'll do that next. And uh, what the hell was that? That was 10 hertz signal. Yeah. Let's hear 20 hertz. 
30, 40, 50, 60. Soundfire is working good. It is getting warm though. As I, I like I said, it has been set up. So let's do that next. And then, uh, okay, so we're gonna do first test, or not test, adjustment is the idling adjustment. And what we do is we set up the, the, bi the biasing for the amplifier. Uh, we test across R432, which is this emitter resistor on this side. And then we do R431, which is this emitter resistor. So we're gonna do this channel first. And we're setting for eight millivolts DC. You should be able to see the uh, voltmeter up in the corner. Turn this on. And you'll see that it is way out, way out. And if we can find a screwdriver to adjust it, why is it so bloody high? I don't know if I can get it down. Let's turn it down. And we don't have correct range of adjustment. That's, um, that's as high as it goes. And if I turn it opposite way, I'm beginning to think these pots are bad. Let's shut this off. Let's give it a spray and give it a clean. What I might need to do is get uh, rid of these these pots and get some decent ones, ten turn or something. Let's give it a little shot of deoxid too, just to clean it up. Just like half a drop, not even. Okay, so try one more time. Turn it on. Yeah, these pots are garbage. Let me try the other channel. Let's try the other channel. That's why the uh, the heatsink is just scorching now because it's passing so much current through those uh, power transistors. Uh, we're getting, when it should be 8 millivolts, we're getting like 160, 150. So that's, you know, outrageous amount of current through those transistors. Let's see how this one does. This one's even worse. <laughs> 400 and some millivolts. Wow. Okay, let's give this one a spray.
Okay, let's try it one more time. 450, 400. No, we're not. We're not getting the right range. Something's definitely wrong. Something's definitely wrong with the biasing still on this. Um, it might be one of the transistors I substituted. Might have the wrong gain. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to say 777. Okay, let me go through, uh, run through with what I think is going on here and what's wrong um, with, with this amplifier at the moment. Problem I'm having is I have too much idle current going through my output transistors. I have, um, I'm trying to set it and it should be around 8 millivolts across one of these resistors. But it's not. I'm getting, on one channel I'm getting around, the lowest I can set it to is 35 millivolts. Can you see that? No, you can't. Sorry. The lowest I can set it to is, on the one channel, is 35 millivolts. And the other channel, it um, the lowest I can actually set it down to is 350 millivolts. And uh, in case you're wondering, it's supposed to be at 8 millivolts. And that sets up the idling current that's going through these transistors at 17 milliamps which isn't very much because uh, when you have 17 milliamps at 47 volts you're consuming 800 milliwatts of power and that's just idling current that you know heats these transistors up right but the situation right now on the one channel I have 35 millivolts across this resistor so what that's doing is it's setting up 74 milliamps of idle current when I only want 17 and this these two transistors are dissipating uh, well and their resistors as well they're dissipating uh, 3.5 watts altogether which isn't terrible but it's not great because you're going to get warming up you know the heat sink's going to be warming up and your, your amplifier is sitting idle it's going to get warm but on the other channel my problem is I have 350 millivolts going through here. So I don't know why the difference between the two channels. I'm going to have to investigate that. But I'm going to focus on one channel first. Um, 350 milliamps, millivolts across, you know, this resistor. And um, that sets up the idle current at 745 milliamps, which is a hell of a lot of current these transistors are going through right now. Um, it's almost an amp of current that's being bled down and doing absolutely no work at all except heating up these transistors and that's like 35 watts of power. So I'm going to focus on one channel first. But this is what I think is going on here. I have this 3K pot, our VR404, and um, it's got a range from 0 ohms to 3k ohms and when I turn the pot down to a low resistance at 0 ohms I get a higher idling current here. I get uh, It goes up to like 50 or 60 milliamps. And when I turn it to the 3k, turn the pot to measure 3k across here, it goes down to 35 uh, millivolts. That's the lowest I can get it. No, actually it goes down to about 40, 40 some, 45 I think it was. Does that make right? Yeah, that's right I think. So what I did is I took this 3K pot out and I put it in a 5K. Alright, I wanted to see if that extra 2K of range of adjustment made a difference. And it did, it dropped from what it was previously down to 35 millivolts. That's where I get this 35 millivolts from because I had it in my head, I'm sorry. So. What I think is going on here is, um, if you look at the flow of current through here, 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 this is the way I'm thinking anyways, this is, I'm not 100% sure, and it goes through these two diodes, then it goes through the bias pot, and then it goes through this transistor. 
100 ohm resistor to ground. I think that's the path, the current path for this circuit. Um, 5K, 3K, it improves, but um, it doesn't improve enough. And then if I went in and I started tinkering with these resistor values, which I might have to do, it might bring that back into the center of balance. Because right now on this transistor, I think I, I had the measurements. Oh yeah, they're down here. The transistor 404. 404. Okay, collector should be at 24.8 volts. Collector at 24.8. And I measured 29 something, so it's high. And then, uh, which other one was it? The base was at 1 volt. And I measured on this base something like 1.9, I think it was, if memory. And then the emitter was supposed to be at 0.4 volts. And I think I measured 0.9. So that last number should be 0.4 and that is the current flowing through this lake. So that current is high. So something's telling me this transistor is turning on more than what it should. And this is a 2SC 1345, which I didn't have in it. So what I did is I substituted C 1345. What I did is I substituted a C2240. And when I, I'm going to have to rethink this, I'm going to have to go find a different transistor and try it out in this position right here to see if maybe it's the gain on that transistor that's throwing this circuit, at, this leg of the circuit out. And I have a feeling that's what it is. So I'm going to, right now, I'm going to hunt up another transistor one that's suitable for the circuit and we're going to try it out. Okay, so I've just spent uncounted hours trying to figure out this amplifier, why it wouldn't work. And uh, I got to admit it was all a stupid mistake on my part. Um, I'll tell you what was going on here. I had the amplifier all connected, or what I thought was connected, and I had uh, I was feeding it, uh, you know, this is the, the ground, and the red and the orange wires, your power feeds, the green and the purple wires are speaker outlets and red and white coaxials are your inputs. Simple enough, right? And what I was doing is I was getting um, heavy, heavy bias on the output transistors, turning them on, and I was getting uh, about 400 millivolts across a 0.47 ohm resistor which equates to just about an amp of current going through and uh, it wasn't enough current to blow the 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 protection fuses for each amplifier each amplifier has its own protection fuse one and a half amps the current wasn't high enough to blow that fuse but it was high enough to um, cause the outputs transistors to heat up to the point where they would self-destruct and uh, even with the heat sink it was, it was it was pretty bad it was a lot of heat a lot of current going through there dissipating some 35 watts or something on the heat sink for each channel couldn't figure out what was going on I poured over the schematic a hundred times um, what I did is I would um, I knew this I knew it worked because I fed a signal through it and it worked. But then for some odd reason, it started this high current thing. And I, now that I think back about it, I know why. Um, the input transistor works fine. Um, it has a DC blocking capacitor here. So that wasn't part of the bias circuit. So everything on this side is working perfectly. And what else I did is I removed the connection to these two, the bases of these two transistors effectively cutting this off from the rest of the circuit. And as soon as I did that, um, the current dropped to uh, just a few milliamps. And I was getting just uh, maybe five or six millivolts across each of these resistors, which means there's basically no, really no current flowing. So I knew all these four transistors, there was no problem. Everything was working fine. And I knew the problem was in the biasing circuit. So I, tra I tried changing diodes, I tried changing resistors or transistors around. 
I tried basically everything I could think of and I came up with a loss as to why this circuit was so badly biased. So what I did is I um, started looking at it from a different perspective. I looked at the board and you can see here, it might be difficult to see because everything's green. But um, if you look here, there's a trace that runs down here. This is the ground trace for the power circuit. Okay. And then there's a trace here that runs this way and one for this way, one for each channel. These are the ground circuits for the, uh, the transistor amplification and biasing. Um, then it occurred to me, I looked at the wiring diagram here, where is it? This is the wiring diagram for the, for the amp. Um, red is my power input. Orange is my power input for the other channel. Black is common ground. It goes right back to the capacitor. Um, then I have the biasing diode, the white and gray. White and gray is the biasing diode. Purple and green is my speaker outputs. Everything's good on this side. And then I started looking here. Well, I have um, a shielded cable. I got the center conductor connected to the input, and I got the shielded connected to the ground, which is normal. And then it runs to this um, input jack, and this input jack is insulated from the chassis. There is no connection between chassis ground and this ground. And then it got me wondering, well, why, where is the ground for this part of the circuit? There is no ground. And I looked, and there's a, a wire here coming from the control amp printed circuit board. It's black wire. And it goes to LP517 for that channel, and it goes to LP501 for this channel. And I got looking at it, and yes, there was wires here, two black wires, and they were cut and tucked into the loom. And I couldn't see them. And uh, I pulled those wires out, and I attached them to the circuit uh, signal grounds, and now everything's working 100%. So my mistake, I didn't connect those two ground wires up, and threw out the entire amplifier, um, but it seems to be working now. I have to get it biased and aligned. And uh, I have instructions here for that. Uh, here we go. Yeah, 8 millivolts DC across VR404. Oh, that's the adjustment. Across R432, 431, and I should get 8 millivolts. And then there's a DC balance adjustment as well, which. Uh, kind of gets the um, equal, equal uh, gets the sine wave placed within that band and gives it equal clipping on both positive and negative cycles. So we're going to go through these tests right now. We're going to adjust all this and see if we can get this running and then uh, move on to the rest of the unit. But man, did that ever screw me up for a lot of time. And uh, you learn from your mistakes, I guess, eh? Okay, we're all wired in for a dummy load. It's got a set of speakers, got a oscilloscope hooked up, got a voltmeter here to tell me how many watts I'm going to put, it, put out. Get that ready. Volts AC, okay, let's turn it on. And uh, we have it, the preamplifier and amplifier are jumpered, so they're connected together now. Let's try speakers. Two, we have a signal. You can hear it. And we're on FM. Let's feed it some tones first. Let's start with a thousand hertz tone. Okay. Got that. Let's get this to auxiliary.
What's going on here? Well, I got smoke. I did see smoke. Yes, I'm seeing smoke. Why? What's getting hot? Ah. I had a bad driver transistor that burned out. It's not cool. What is going on there? Okay, so I'm just working through some bugs here and then it seems like I'm having a little upset. I had uh, powered the amplifier up and I was getting smoke coming from somewhere. I started feeling around and one of the driver transistors was getting pretty hot. It was burning my fingers. So I removed it, tested it, it's okay. I tested its, its complement, it's okay. And then I started testing the output transistors and this one showed a um, base emitter short. So I pulled it out, test it, it's okay. So I said, what the hell's going on here? So poking around with my ohm meter, there's a resistor here. It's 330 ohms. And I check it with my ohm meter. And it measures 3.7. Now either I made a mistake and put a 3.7 in instead of a 330 or that resistor change value which is don't know if that's possible I think the first scenario is probably the more realistic one it does look like it has a black band instead of a brown and I might have put that in there by mistake but I think when I built this board I tested every component for tolerance and value and um, put all brand new capacitors and um, that one might have slipped by me. I don't know. I'm going to change that to a 330 now and then we'll get back on track here. The other channel seems fine. So I think that's my problem. All right. So I think we got it finally fixed for the last time. I got it on uh, speaker system one, which is the bench speakers. Let's turn it on. Getting a nice clean signal. I think my left speaker here is blowing, to tell you the truth. It's got a buzz to it. I should actually really get that fixed. So let's uh, turn the dummy load on and look at, at the scope so here's our 1000 hertz tone and right there is clipping let's uh, before we do that let's get this amplifier aligned let's do the uh, the DC balance adjustment so we need to do one channel at a time here. Let's do the left channel. We hit the balance all the way over. Turn up the left channel. And you see how the bottom starts clipping before the top? We're going to adjust that. I hope. If I can find a screwdriver. No, this will work. Maybe. No, it's too small. Okay. Turn this up. Actually, first, let's get rid of this. So we can have a good look at this. Left channel. See the bottom's clipping before the top. Let me adjust this so that it's even. The 
think I got it there. Bottom and top are pretty much equal. So I think we got the balance set right. We're at full power output and I got 15.2 volts RMS on the left channel. Try the right channel. Need to trigger from the right. Okay. Got a trigger from channel two. Turn this up. This my adjustment tool. Turn this up some more. Now it seems kind of equal already. Maybe a little. Top comes in a little first, then yeah, I gotta turn up. Turn it to the bottom. There we go. I think that's balanced there. It's pretty close. Pretty close. Let's measure this channel. See what we're getting for output. Getting 15.15, which is pretty much bang on. So I think we're done with alignment. Let's try giving it some frequency. It stays pretty flat. 9 kilohertz, 10. 22. Yeah, it's clipping right there. Okay, both channels involved here. Not bad, not bad. 23 kilohertz, 21 kilohertz, full power output. Amplifiers starting to warm up. Let's turn this down, turn the speakers back on.
it goes. 30 hertz. Twenty hertz. Ten. Ten is not very good. I'm happy with that. So uh, let's go through the receiver and see what else needs doing on this. Uh, let's see here. Turn this up. Base, a little scratchy, a little scratchy. That's the tape. Okay, so AM tuner is working good. I think it needs a little bit of a tune-up. FM is working great. It doesn't even have an antenna and it was pulling stations in. Um, this is quite warm now that I had it on full power for X number of minutes. Let that cool off. Um, I'm going to go through and check all these capacitors to make sure that they're all still good. If there's any weak ones, I'll change them. Um, I'll go through and do an alignment AM FM tuner, I'll check the phono board, make sure everything's working there. I'll check the multiplex board, make sure everything's working with the caps and everything's good and the alignment. And all the lamps are working. I won't touch that. Needs a cleanup. I'll do that. And I'm going to change this capacitor. Um, just because I did pull it out and test it and it was 100% good it's a 63 volt 2200 microfarad um, capacitor I have a feeling this little 2200 is a little bit too small for this application I'm gonna change it I'm gonna put it in a, uh, a 63 volt 8200 microfarad same physical size but shorter and um, it should fit right into that clamp and no problem. And we'll go through and we'll make sure everything's 100% when we're done. Okay, so I'm gonna get on with cleaning and I'll clean some of these switches. I didn't even check any of these switches. Let's check some right now. Tuning meter's working. Here's Washboard Union and Doc Rock. As best they can, and, you know, and, and like I said, Starting you know, switch. Your own kids just going home. Can't tell that on AM. Coverage. CMP are here on scene investigating. It's number one local news. Global news hour at six. Together. Okay. I'll go through and do some cleaning and fixing. I still have to replace a, a lamp, burned out lamp here for this power switch. Okay, so I got a bit to do. So here's the difference between the two caps. The new one's 8200, the old one's 2200. It's quite a bit shorter. Same diameter, so it'll fit right in the bracket. So I pulled the front panel off and look what I see. There's an LED and these four LEDs. This one was left to be incandescent. And then there's four LEDs in behind here as well. So somebody's been in here and did a little bit of work. That's okay. But less for me. Turn the signal generator off. I just finished going through the AM FM alignment and uh, I was checking to see 
um, how bad it, out of alignment this, this receiver was, but actually it turned out to be somebody's gone through here and done alignment already. And I can tell there's marks on the IF cans. Um, there's, you know, it's it's already been peaked up. I went through and did some peaking already, and, and I can, couldn't get much improvement over what was already done. So somebody's gone through and done AM, FM alignment on this, and I kind of suspected that because uh, it, the FM portion is very sensitive, and uh, the signal's coming in good. Every time I scan through a, a station, I'm getting full 10 on the bars on the meter. And... Uh, yeah, it's very, very good receiver. Uh, AM's working good. I'll go to AM and we'll test it out a bit. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern to order a by practicing. I got a little bit of noise on my bench here, and you can hear that buzzing picking. It's picking up a buzzing. If I started turning things off, that would go away. But. Uh, for the most part, it's very sensitive. <laughs> very sensitive, and I'm only using is the uh, the built-in mic or the built-in antenna. And building up the gas lines in northern Ontario. Also. Fully, the scale just fully goes right over when it stations. So everything's good that way. Let's try it FM. Sounds great. Keep it high. It's very quiet. You got a stereo station. It means it's working properly. You got very little hiss, background noise. Ivory is also So you can see it has no trouble whatsoever picking up stations. So this concludes what I'm doing to this. Um, looks like I've got it back to a point where it's going to be a nice unit. Uh, I got the amplifier, scratch built amplifier, and I um, used the original uh, schematics. Some of you are probably asking why did you go through the trouble of recreating the original printed circuit board and uh, circuit when there's so much more modern and new equipment out there that I could have substituted in there and you're right I could have substituted like for example here's a um, class D digital amplifier um, stereo I think you believe 60 watts a channel and that would have fit in there just perfect um, would have gave it more power but uh, to tell you the truth it, it wouldn't sound the same it wouldn't come anywhere as close to the sound this amplifier is going to give. Um, that's the main reason why I stuck with this amplifier is because I wanted to retain that sound quality that Harman Kardon is known for on these receivers. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't think you can beat that. Um, plus, it's ease of ser serviceability too. Like, you have full uh, workshop manuals service manuals for these things and uh, you know it's all correct for the workshop manual so it's it's a it's a you know it's a good thing there I took the 2200 microfarad cap out and replaced it with an 8200 and I think that's going to make some improvement in performance not that this thing's in a performance uh, type unit it's you know it's rated at uh, I think it was rated at 20 watts a channel, and I don't, I can't remember what I measured. Uh, it was on the video, but um, I think this will make a big improvement over um, for the amplifier itself in in transients and in power output. I went through the entire receiver, checked all of the caps that were uh, originals, and they are all good. So I'm not touching any of them, uh, including the phono preamp stage. Um, there's really nothing else to do to this thing. Um, somebody went in and did an LED retrofit. These are LEDs. Um, these lights are LEDs. The stereo indicator is an incandescent, but I'm, it's working. I'm going to leave it alone. This was uh, an LED replaced, 
and I replaced this uh, burned out incandescent with another incandescent. So that's working now. Switches are clean, pots are clean, there's no more scratchy pots. Well, that's. Uh, Everything's working good. Switches are working good. Tuning's perfect. I've lubed all the dial string up. Not the dial string, but the pivot points and the, and the pulleys. I lubed everything up in the shaft, and it's got a good feel to it now. It's got a really nice feel to it. Um, don't know what else to say to this uh, about this, except for, um, you know, I had my major screw up when I was installing the amplifier. I didn't have grounds installed and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get biasing, proper biasing on the amplifier. Um, and that was because it had, they had no ground reference. So as soon as I added the ground reference everything fell into place and started working perfectly. Uh, I'm pleased with the selection of the transistors. I think those will do well in this application. And um, the application was also uh, for these two, these four transistors, the drivers I substituted those as well and they're working great. Amplifier is stable, there's no oscillations, um, no weird distortion, uh, you know, it seems to be working good. So all that's left to do now is put the cover back on and um, hook it up and start enjoying it. So I hope you enjoyed this um, episode, anyways, of this bringing this Harman Kardon 330B back to life by uh, you know, recreating a power amplifier and wiring it in and getting it going and bringing it back. All right, thanks for watching and I appreciate your uh, comments. Thanks.